Hi everyone, it's Roger and Abe here, FundersKingdom.com, with a highlight video from our recent Infinity and Beyond podcast. Okay, so our feature topic for today is going to be the inside out playset kind of review and sort of discussion. Um, we Each week we're going to go through and talk in a little bit more depth about each of the playsets. And on this week, we're going to be talking about the inside out playset. So I'm going to throw this one straight over to Abe on your thoughts on this one. <laughs> you want my thoughts on the inside out playset? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's start with me. Um, uh, I'm not a big fan. <laughs> okay. Uh, look, it's not bad, but to me, it's still it's not good. I don't know. Maybe I've been um, maybe I've been uh, what do you call it? Um, spoiled, rotten with my 3D games nowadays, and my platforms are just not my platform games are just not as uh, fun to me anymore. But I guess to me, it's it's the unlockables. There really isn't much. Um, the fact that you, well, at least me, I don't know, maybe some, I'm doing something wrong. Maybe you guys can tell me. But the fact that I can't get three stars anytime I try to go through any level. Um, I I enjoy going through getting the balloons and everything. But then it's that darn green balloon square. If I, I don't get, the discussed one. It, it, if I don't get one balloon from that timed square, that's it. Uh, there goes my chances of getting all the balloons in that level. <laughs> I might as well just stop playing the level and start over. Um, but um, And then, obviously, as far as time goes, I mean, if you don't use fear, I don't think you'll ever go through the uh, beat the seven-minute mark like they usually set. Um, one of the things that really bums me out is the potential of a lot of amazing toys and obstacles in these play sets not being able to be used in the play uh, in the toy box, mm-hmm. um, and it and it and it coincides with unlockables. Uh, is there any unlockable? <laughs> I mean, like I think I unlocked the uh, the wagon, Bing Bong's wagon, a while ago. Like it was like yeah. the first time I played it. And broccoli. I, yeah, and the broccoli, but the broccoli guy, and it's like, okay, that's it. Like I don't know. Um, I mean, aside from that, honestly, the 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 replay value is great. Um, the obstacles and everything that gets triggered is cool. I love how it's animated. Um, and then you know, the platforming is fun. Don't get me wrong. It's just to me, like I said, it's it's just the time and being trying to be getting all the balloons and the collectibles. It's just. Uh, if there's no balance, then I don't. Maybe I'm just not good at playing this game. I, I don't know what it is, but um. Ultimately, um, I think the little puzzle game on the side is a lot more fun, in my opinion. <laughs> so, what is it called? The, the, oh, the memory the, maker. Yeah, the, yeah. That I don't know. That was a lot more fun, in my opinion. But it's just a puzzle. I, I don't know. I, I like I said, it's not it's not a bad playset, but to me, I don't think it's that great either. I just platforming's fun, but it's old school. Like I said, maybe I'm spoiled rotten because I like my 3D. Um, I did like the levels where I'm doing the 3D stuff. Like, like for example, one of the first ones, like with the uh, like you see sandals moving around and then you like sandwiches yeah. and a tunnel and then like you know, that's cool. Like that interactivity, like you trigger this to happen. That was awesome. But then when I got to my platforming, it just, eh, it felt short. It felt like repetitive. It felt like everything was the same. Oh, you have a little device that brings you up. Oh, you have a little gear that turns around. It's like how it got old to me. I mean, yeah, going upside down was cool too. That was, that was pretty cool. Uh, But yeah, that's just my opinion. It was a fun, fun play set, but not my favorite. No. See, see, I'm going to kind of come at this slightly different angle because um, to me, um, other than the unlocks and the toys and stuff, I'm going to look at that in a little bit later on, but the actual gameplay for this game, um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I am... I'm, was, I was a kid in, in, in the 80s. I grew up on 2D platformers and this felt great. I enjoyed it. Um, you know, when you had, especially, I must admit, I, I've fallen for the thing of fear to me. After using fear and getting used to his speed, when I put the other characters on, I feel like I'm in sludge mode. And so I've got used to having fear. I've, and I'm used to Mario and Sonic where, and Mega Man where you're running around and you've got speed. And so fear is fantastic for that. Um, fear, I just, it makes me 
the two D platforming. I love it. It's really cool. It's very well done. I love the gear mechanisms. I love the the, the challenges. Some of them are quite hard. You know, some of the levels are taking like 20, 25 minutes on because I haven't taken a while to kind of get where I need to go and where. But once I've done that, I can then see how I can do the speed run throughs a second time to kind of get the get the upgrade ones. Um, the balloons have kind of got a. Pol- <laughs> I will grab them if I can. I don't. If I miss them, I'm not bothered about collecting as many as possible. Um, I'm tending just to wanting to finish the level um, and enjoy it while I'm doing it. But I love the the overall the look of the playset. I think it looks amazing. I think it looks. Um, it just looks a stunning kind of the way they've done it. It just looks really cool. I like the interaction between. You have these little areas for the different characters, but in all honesty, you don't really need them too much because you have that flip over point where you can change between the characters. Um, other than the, I've just found fear. Fear can, I run fast enough on the clouds, I don't have to worry about um, the clouds too much. He can jump. If I just, I'm just, I've just really kind of fear has really sowed the game on me. Um, it's made, it's turned it back into what kind of game I loved as a kid. And the 3D sections kind of feel a bit like Skylandery. Um, you know where you're jumping around different parts and stuff, and I've just really enjoyed it. I've, it, like I said, I almost feel like you could take this game, disconnect it from if you just literally just pop that out as a separate game, the inside out or the inside out game, and popped it down. That's what it would be. It just feels like a a, a straight a, a movie game that's been out at the same release that we saw in years ago. That kind of game that was completely separate. It sometimes doesn't even feel very infinity like. That's maybe the side thing of what we've been talking about. Do you get what I mean on that? Yeah, no, I I, I totally see that. Um, but I, I mean, yeah, I, I agree with you. It plays well. It, it has a lot of cool effects. I mean, um, but to me, the, the point of this game, and they they they've described. I mean, they've mentioned this is like you you got to collect the balloons. You have to get the the missing pages or whatever, uh, and the memory orbs and the uh, the idea bulbs. But this whole thing is centered around collecting balloons and making sure you collect them all. And the fact that you're even mentioning that, oh, I, I get them if I can. If I don't, blah blah. Well, that's the part of the game is to complete everything and to get your your three stars. I mean, it, that that's the thing that's bothering me. I guess that's the point. My frustration is not being able to get everything. Um, to the point where that's the that's the point of beating the level. I mean, yeah, you can go back, and okay, this time around, I'm gonna aim just for the balloons, um, or this time around, I'm gonna try to get all the pages, um, and that's, that's cool. You can do that. Yeah, but I was just gonna say that's how it kind of feels to me. Like it's the replay part of it because you can't do speed and and the balloons at the same time. You're not gonna be able to do that. You have to pick one or the other to replay it for. Because I think if you try to hit every single balloon, you're going to take too long because you've got to, because you could run through that level as fast as you possibly can, and there's whole sections you could miss out because you're not trying to collect all those balloons, isn't it? Well, those dumb green balloon boxes, then those are the <laughs> ones that kill it for me. But <laughs> no, but I mean, it, I, I mean, like you, I see what you're saying, your point, and 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 I'll agree with you completely. Like it does play differently. It is like a separate um game than we're used to for infinity i mean i'm sure that's how i'm gonna feel when um battlegrounds comes out because it looks completely different um but as far as wanting to replay over and over again uh i mean i got frustrated going through like maybe like the seventh or eighth level like does it even change like does everything look different like do we go into different parts of the brain like that's yeah i mean I i was just thinking like i think on the last level i was playing last night um, there was some kind of castle, and we were in. It just it all just looks so random, but it's very bright and colourful. I think the whole game kind of looks like that. Um, but I think it's it's just that kind of thing. You know, I after playing through the other two Star Wars play sets, it just and like the takeover, I just feel like I'm playing an entirely different video game, and that's how I feel. I just feel like I'm not even playing the same game, mm-hmm. and that's not a bad thing. That and I think this was you know we all a lot of people complained about the variety factor from two point zero. Mm-hmm. Well, this game, this platform, this is completely different to Twilight and Rise of the Empire. You couldn't; these games couldn't even be any more different. They are sort of, like I said, if they went for variety, this feels like a pre- classic Disney game that you would just go and buy separately. You know, like you used to in you know on the previous generations, where you you know you might go buy Bolt or Castle of Illusion or Ducktales or something. This is just the Inside Out game, 
and that is kind of where and i love it i actually think this is a great idea this almost feels like like i said they've gone out here's make a make a new video game about this movie and we'll just and we'll put, put it into infinity that's how it kind of feels mm-hmm. i don't think that's a bad thing no no it's not it's not um but yeah, yeah, now then we get some on people favor other gameplay. So I'm Yeah, um there. I think for me it's like I like I like I like two D platformers and um I haven't quite got around into the toy box of kind of re- trying to recreate this kind of thing. But this felt like you know pr- a proper two D platforming game. Um mm-hmm. and I always enjoy the see I always enjoyed the two D stuff more than the three D stuff. That was and I loved, you know, the trying to jump up to the corners and get in and trying to um yeah, no, I really dig the 2d platforming because that's i haven't felt you know you get a few of the like the indie games and stuff but it you know the kind of like i said mario and sonic were what i grew up on and they were and that was kind of classic gaming and that's what it reminded me of and i think that's what probably why i'm enjoying it more yeah i mean i used to enjoy them myself growing up but i i guess to me it, you know, getting back into a 2D platformer, it has to be like really, really good in order for me to to like really be hooked. For me, I'm just being honest. It just it's not my thing. But um, no. I'm definitely gonna try to jump back into it, see if I can beat it. But yeah, no, I'm, I mean, you brought up this thing about unlocks, and I'm gonna be honest. That is this is a thing I'm I am slightly mm-hmm. disappointed with because, and we mentioned this when we were talking about Twilight the Republic last week. Every time we did a challenge last week on the in the Twilight one, you get a you get a toy, be it a mm-hmm. tanks person, be it a um, a building or a, a sky or a texture disc or something. If you complete it with gold, you get more ones. Or if you get the challenges and stuff. And I remember looking through the toy box section and going, well, where there doesn't seem to be a lot of toys in here. There's a few like decorations and stuff. And you're playing through this place. going, Oh my God, that's amazing. I'd love that. Could we have these changing switch for the switches that make them coming in and out and the gears and these people and the P things you could pick up and you could, you know, could you imagine having it's like, it feels like those, the gear mechanisms and the wind clouds and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, why isn't this in the toy box? And it just oh, feels right. like it just, I'm actually just going, I mean, I know there's certain elements, you know, like the force pull and push on the Twilight ones. I can understand some of it, but some of it, this is when I start feeling it feels like it's an entirely different game and they haven't worked out how to put this into the toy box or they didn't really maybe want to spend as much time on the toy box this year. But this stuff just felt like, why isn't this in the toy box? You know, all the sky domes and the tra- trains and it's like, it, it feels like you almost would be difficult to create an inside out um, toy box because there's just not enough content in it and now you have this huge play set and there's just no content yeah I, think, I, I, I was gonna say go next year when we go on 4.0 and you put that thing down all you unlock is a, a wagon and a broccoli <laughs> it's just gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be there's not gonna be a lot of there just doesn't seem to be a lot of toys and i don't know i don't know what it is i am disappointed in that aspect of it i just i feel like i've played through the game for most of the week and i've only unlocked a couple of toys doesn't feel oh, very... no, yeah. Like I said, you know, there's no ta- you know, maybe because it is it it is so separate. Maybe it is because it it's been built as almost like a separate game to feel different. It's not very maybe it's not very friendly with the toy box. Maybe this stuff just was it wasn't built for the toy box and then put into the game. It was built for the game and they can't work out how to put it in the toy box. No, yeah. I... <laughs> It just brings me back to, you know, playing parts of the Caribbean playset, not being able to, you know, have a, a pirate ship in water or the Lone Ranger playset, not being able to have a big train I can put on. I mean, now you can this sort of do it with a spline tool, but, but, um, but like, no, but you see, ju- that to me isn't, that's actually those playsets you could at least, you could put down the buildings, you could put down the skies, you could, right, right, right. this but, feels even worse. That's what I was going to get to, yeah. And this one, uh, it just feels like all we got was like a cloud that we can put in um, to step There's on. Some cannons, and, I think, are there. Yeah, some cannons, and then just your broccoli and your wagon. And yeah, it just, it. I, I don't know. I mean, it goes back to the limitations and what they can give us in Toy Box, and I get it. But still, it's it's like you said. It's like <laughs> you're going to put that down, and all you get is two little things. And I don't know. I, it goes down to what you were saying, you know, it's a 2d platformer. Um, and I mean, what can they give you to use in the toy box? If you want to do a 2d platformer, you're not going to have that same experience. It's definitely going to be different. 
you know, like in the game, you've kind of got these different things that you can break up little boxes and little like wrapping, uh, like sweet wrappers. And um, it's like even things like that, you're looking at going, well, what that just feels like that should be something as a decoration that should be available. You know, and like I said, it, I, I don't feel like I go in and make a, a, an inside out toy box from the stuff I've got, I've unlocked from the toys. You know, mm -hmm. I can go in and make loads of Star Wars toy boxes, but inside out just feels like, you know, it's like, well, was this supposed to be a toy, a, a power disc pack to come with it with the sky dome and the terrain? You know, it just feels like, you know, there should even be a, like an, in, you know, like a purple, you know, some of those skies would be awesome in it. It just, it's frustrating. And it's probably the one thing that's frustrating me more because I'm playing through it and go, this is great. Love it. Love the playset. Really cool. Really worth checking out. But it ain't giving me a lot of toys for my, for my toy box. Which is generally the reason why a lot of people, you know, it's added bonus, added value, and it feels like it's completely separate from the game. And it, it feels the more I'm playing it, the more it kind of, it's like, yeah, this is just a separate video game. Mm -hmm. And that's not to take away from the fact that the game, I re I'm enjoying playing it. And if you've got Disney Infinity 3.0 and you're a Disney fan or like Inside Out, pick it up. Um, I'm going to be honest, um, if you're picking it up and you're on a budget, I wouldn't bother buying um, Disgust and Sadness because um, I really struggled to see much value in, other than uh, Sadness being able to walk on clouds. In the toy box, they're not really going to offer you any difference um, and because they all seem very, very too similar when you're in the toy box. And I just... Yeah, they're, 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 almost, they're so close to each other. I know they've made these like adjustments, but because they put that functionality of being able to switch costumes which i understand why they've done that but then it takes away the entire point of having to have the extra figures yeah but i, I don't know i, I kind of disagree with that i mean this game is about figures you I mean you want to have them regardless of whether they work in a place or not you know you might still want them for your toy box but but um but they are very similar though aren't they as far as what you said on the playset goes yeah all you need is fear that's, that's, that's the truth. That's, that's the truth. <laughs> because you, and if you did need to get those lava things, you can usually just flip to use the the changer, and it's like sometimes it's like that, you know, like I felt it's like clouds. Yeah, sadness can walk on them, and you can you can take a little bit longer when you're on the clouds. Mm -hmm. But then when you when you get to the later on, when you've got those big tornadoes coming through, you need fear because you you're too. It's like um, the trains, it's coming. Whereas fear is like, yeah, then you're across and you can leg it. Um, but, and I think this is the thing, I just keep thinking it's like fear is what so, probably saved the game for me because I think I'd probably find it quite frustrating using anger because anger feels like I'm, like I said, you're walking in sludge. And I was really hoping anger was you know, going to be a, I was really looking forward to having anger. Um, but in the place that I just don't use them. I just I just find them frustrating. And, but I used to say with disgust and sadness, I just don't use them. I just you play with fear. Yeah, but uh, if you see if you were into farming, <laughs> anger, <laughs> ang, ang, anger would be, be anger would be your favorite because he can clear up so much with the special move. So, <laughs> see there again, it's like special moves. You don't even need to use them. And in, in I, oh, you know, they were, they were those were solely given to these characters just for the toy box. Yeah. That, that, because, yeah. Yeah, I mean, literally, you, I mean, I was playing for 11, I was play for a few levels, and I'm like, hold on, if I actually, it's like, well, you only do battle, because it's not a combat game, and I think that's the difference, they put the, the broccoli in there, but they're not really the main focus of the game, because Inside Out isn't that kind of thing, and, that's, and I do like the fact that it is completely different, it's not like uh, Twilight, where you're just battling constant droids, Um, so I do think, I, it's, it's almost feels like, in some ways, it being quite critical of the of the playset for being um, restrictive from that point of view. But I think it's a massive element of the inside out, which is our frustration. And we've both felt the same. And I'm sure, and there's been this kind of thing of, there's been, even on our Facebook group, there's been quite a bit of a, a split, isn't there, between people that like it and people that don't. Yep. I mean, clearly you and I are a split on this one. I mean, I yeah. don't hate it. I just, I don't like it either. <laughs> yeah. It's. I mean, I like I said. I really, I really enjoy playing the playset, and I would. But the unlockable side of things. I mean, that's where I'm. As a toy box person, I'm disappointed, and that's really kind of quite difficult because you're not looking at the playset and going, the playset itself is playing fine and it works fine. It's just 
the the added value feels like I'm I'm missing out. I mean, honestly, I'm I'm finding I'm looking at myself and how I'm reacting to these three play sets I've been playing and. I don't know why, but I'm enjoying Rise against the Empire the most because of the amount of unlockables. I mean, the gameplay is similar to other playsets from 1.0 and 2.0, but the fact that I'm able to buy stuff in-game, even though I'm using coins, I'm unlocking stuff in the game, and um, I can use that in the toy box later on, and I guess that's what what I was yeah. hoping or lacking from from the Inside Out playset. I mean, maybe that's my default. I mean, I'm sorry, maybe that's my reasoning behind how I feel because maybe I'm comparing it to it. But yeah. um, but still, I just, uh, I don't know. The, the Unlockables was a big missed opportunity, mm. in my opinion. See, I, I, loved, I prefer the Twilight of the Republic system where you unlock little things continuously by doing challenges. I prefer that system. Where it felt like a bit more of a reward as you're going along. Or, or either one is fine. I didn't really like. The, I didn't like the thing with the twi- with the rise where you had to collect the coins and then you had to buy them. I just liked the fact if I could finish, diminish, and here's a and here's something you've done to to win it. You know, and the only way you can unlock that toy is to do that. And that felt to me the most rewarding. Either one's fine. Either one's fine. I mean, compared to to Inside Out, either one is perfect. You don't get that inside out. I mean, you, you, <laughs> that, that's the that's the point. That's the point I was trying to make. But yeah, the only thing is, is like every time like the little sign comes up and you go in, oh, I gotta get a toy. Uh, it's more concept art, I'm like oh no, <laughs> and it's it's quite bad really because it, it, it's like it seems like the one site is the one big downfall of this playset to me is this constant feeling of I'm not unlocking anything and. It, it shouldn't really be like, and it feels bad to take to the whole game. The game isn't bad because of the unlocks. It's just, it feels too separate. It feels very separate from the infinity. I, and it's hard to not to say that anymore. Really. It just, it just feels like they've just taken, here's a brand, another brand new, here's a new game that we've made. Um, let's see if we can fit it into infinity somehow. Does that make sense? Yeah. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, I think I think as well as like the the two Star Wars ones, they feel like they feel more like a traditional Infinity game because of how the three D platforming and how they unlock, and they're very traditional to do it. Um, maybe that was you know I like the idea that they went and did something completely different, but I do think they need to work on going forward with their playsets that they maybe add a little, they think a little bit more long term in terms of how this playset is going to bring in toys. And you can rec- You should be able to do something with those toys. It it just feels very odd to have just barely nothing. I know there's no buildings, and it would be hard to do something. But you someone you should be able to create an inside out toy box to recreate one a brand new. You know, I know you can get like the bubble, the balloons and stuff. But you would feel like you should be able to recreate a two D platforming section out of some of those toys f- to keep bringing people into this, into that universe. And I don't think it'd, it'd be very hard to do that. Yeah. No, it's, it, it's just, it's just like you said, it's a different game. It's not what you would expect uh, from your regular infinity game, which is a welcome change. You know, you definitely want to see variety, which is great, but um, may- maybe that's the thing. Maybe I'm just expecting it to be like a Disney infinity game that I'm used to and uh, although platformers are great I think the platf- uh, the the most uh, my favorite parts of this place that have to do with um, the 3d aspect in my opinion because you get to see more of it but um but yeah the unlockables was a missed opportunity in my opinion mm. so but I mean like the, the the memory maker game um it feels like it's it's like a a sort of a mobile kind of game that you would have got, and it and it's kind of a bit like sort of free fall, or you're trying to match up the colours and stuff. Um, I don't think it's overly complicated. I've, I mean, I know usually my scores are massively over the, the minimum I needed, which I think is good because if you've got kids playing it, you don't want to be making it too hard for them. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, there's the only thing that it's like I almost feel like well, maybe if they shoved like thought bubbles into there instead. And like like use that it might have been i don't know i this is it just feels like a, a weird like thing of i you know you're playing through levels and you're playing and you complete it very well and you get to the end and you go, well to unlock more you need to play another completely different separate game 
and you might be the, you might be amazing in that in those platformers. You get every balloon, you do it as fast as possible. But if you can't do the mis- the memory maker, you can't go on. And it feels very it feels very odd. It just feels like a completely again a separate a separate game. It feels like a, an added add on as opposed to um, the actual normal traditional video game. Yeah, it, it, it's. I mean, it's an interesting aspect. I mean, they could have even used that um, that memory make game, and like even introduced unlockables to that aspect of the game, or even um, even lead to something like if you collect something in the playset games, it unlocks another thing for you to use. Like um, you know how in like Candy Crush you can buy like a little cheat type of thing yeah. to get a better score. Maybe they could have done something like that, vice versa. But I mean. Uh, that, I honestly I enjoy this part because you know I like the puzzle games and this is a, I expect that to be the way it is you know you don't really play a 3D puzzle game unless it's like you know Infinity where you're searching for something but um, no it was it's cool it's just I don't know it's just not my um, mm. I feel it's, like I'm just playing and not being rewarded. <laughs> The the thing is, what kind of reminded me because it's like with the Skylanders games, where you get those like the lock, the little lock little puzzles, you know, mm-hmm. where you get to a certain point and you'd have to kind of do, and like, do like and they give element. you something new, yeah, and yeah, they give and you they kind of thing to use. Do like that there kind of links into this thing of, you know, the memory maker. Is again, it's it's a good little game. It works very well. I actually could see it. It could be a massive hit on mobile if they did decided to. If they did manage to port that game and put that little bit. As a separate game, I think they could, you know, that would be a good, a good mobile game. Yeah. They'd need to tweak it up a little bit to kind of give it some reward and to toughen it up. But the concept there is very good, and it's just, it's like I said, it's it's a really odd playset because, it, like you keep saying, it's unlike anything we've seen before. You know, the two D element is great, the three D element is great, and even the memory maker, great. They're all great, but sometimes it feels a bit disconnected. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it does feel slightly disconnected for me as well. Yeah, it's you know it's I mean I I can see what they've done and I and I and I do applaud them for taking a different direction with it and I really mm-hmm. honestly do think that that is a great thing going forward and honestly I would say to anyone you know if you've got three point zero pick up the playset pack and play it um, specifically um, like. Maybe later down the line, if you haven't got it yet and it, you see it on sale on Black Friday or something like that, pick it up because I think there's a there's a lot of value in in the you know lots of hours because I I think actually it's probably taken me longer to try and getting through this inside out place than maybe the tw- Star Wars ones. Mm. Well, and it all has to do with not being able to do three stars in one round. So, <laughs> well, balloon. I so yeah. yeah. You know, I flew. I you know, you can go through those two Star Wars playsets without even getting three stars, and you can get to the end of the story. So I, the, I'm gonna, I've got to go the back. Three to stars it. are doable yeah. in the playsets uh, for Star Wars. These, I mean, I don't know how you can do three stars in one run. You can't. Yeah. No, it's. Um, I think that's a good thing with this playset is that you at least, it, like you said, if it makes you play through that play through that level three times, they're adding that value. But there again, this is, comes back to that same thing, of if you're a completionist and you just want to finish the game and you want to get every little item, that's fine. But Star Wars one, the Twilight one, is make. I want to go back in and master that because I want to get the free stars. You know, I want to get. Like in, for example, I think Rise of the Empire. If you get gold on all of those green challenges, you will unlock Jabba the Hutt. Right? I haven't done that yet, but that's going to make me want to go back in there and do that. With Inside Out, it might be a thing of going. Well, I might do that eventually, but there's no desire. If I need, if I want Jabba the Hutt for a toy box, now that's making me now want to go in there and do that. But I'm not getting that feeling with the inside out because there's no there's no rule other than finishing it, which under a normal to- a normal video game would be it. But there doesn't seem to be much reward for it. And Roger, and 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 even let's let's say we leave the reward out of this conversation. Yeah. If I wanted to go back and get three stars in 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 the uh, Star Wars play sets, at least everything that I do there will be different. In Inside Out. 
If I want to get three stars and everything, I have to collect all the balloons. Every single level, all the balloons. Okay, we also got to get all the pages from that. It's, it's the same thing. It's repetitive. And that's that's that was my issue, I guess. And and, and not to mention, I'm, I'm going to bring it up again, that frustrating balloon box. I mean, you would... <laughs> You, you would think they would put, like, at least, let's say, I don't know, an extra 10 balloons just to offset the possibility of that darn box screwing up everything. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but it's the truth. It's like, seriously, if your goal is to get all the balloons and that green box messes you up by one balloon, because it's happened before... Um, <laughs> Why continue? Just stop, quit the level, start over. Because <laughs> it's frustrating. I, it's, it's I frustrating. find like I mean, even I find like that playing some mobile games sometimes. Like I think like I've been playing Inside Out last night on the uh, Thought Bubbles. It is like, oh no, I've just lost one of my ball. You know, you lost one or you lost two, and you go, all right, I'm gonna have to restart that whole level because I'm just there's no point in me carrying on at this point. And there is that thing, but then there's that challenge. Then isn't there? You've got that challenge of wanting to do it. Which is never a bad thing, because that's because if you could rise for it too easy, we go. It's too easy. We can't do it. It's too easy. At least now you're going. It's so hard. And it's so frustrating. I want to do it. But there's that fine line between it going too much the other way, isn't it? I went to the store and I saw a bag of balloons and I was frustrated. That's how, <laughs> that's how bad it was. <laughs> <laughs> So the thing is, it's like, but when you used to play like things like Sonic and Mario, did you used to have to collect all the coins and all? Nope, the you weren't required to go back and do it all. No. See, and, uh, and guess what? I never did. <laughs> <laughs> but the only re- the only reason I used to do that was because, of, especially more was more so to get the extra lives. Again, reward, isn't it? You know, you got those hundred rings or those hundred coins, and you got an extra life. Mm-hmm. So, it, it, especially when it got a bit later on down the line, you needed those extra lives. So there was a there was a, a basic reward in there, and it worked perfectly. But yeah, I must admit, I, just, I think there's that thing of I could easily see myself playing through the, each of the play sets with fear. Now I've played the each levels to just try and get them as fast as possible because I know with fear I can do that. Because once you work out where you're going wrong, and it's like last night I was on this one where I had to flip upside down. I was trying to find the little orb. To unlock it but they were rather than being in one place they were floating mm-hmm. you had to shoot them to kind of i could i was running backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards up and down up and down could i find it no nope, not at all it was quite it was just quite weird that's it's it's just i don't know i mean like you like you you know you said try the game it's not for everybody i'm not gonna lie but um, if it's on sale, definitely worth getting. Other than that, don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I, f- I mean, I'm going to be honest. I, re- I review it a lot higher than that. I do think it's... Um, I think the little frustrations um, are maybe slightly... They're, they're getting their frustrations. The actual place itself, I enjoyed the get. I enjoy it. And I think it's good. And I think if you're into Inside Out or you want a different experience, I love maybe Inside can... Out. I love Inside Out. This, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> but I think for everyone that complained about not having the Disney in the Disney Infinity, it at least feels like this was a way of kind of giving people what they wanted. They wanted that tradi- more, you know, traditional video game for the Disney audience. No, yeah, I mean, I don't want to deter people from playing it. Like, I, I'm, I'll am i say it again. Like, it's a great playset. It's good, but it's not for everybody. For me, I don't like it. I mean, it, I'll play it because it's inside out, and the 3D parts of it are awesome, and some parts are cool, but then uh, some of the platforming, not a fan. Stupid green balloon box, hate it with my life. Um, but other than that, oh, yeah, and the unlockables, you know, don't expect much from it. But the playset is awesome. Like, you will play, let's say, let's just say the first level. You'll play that level, and you're going to be amazed at how beautiful it is and mm-hmm. all these little obstacles. And then you're going to be bummed at the fact that you can't use any of that on the toy box. But other than that, um, it's it's a great playset. It's great. 
I just, like I said, not for everybody, mm. at least not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's like it gets, keep turning back to, it almost feels like if this was a $20 video game on its side, you would say like, oh, yes, it's good, good for what it was. Um, but, and it's just, it harkens back to, I think, to what, you know, if you look at the price of the playset pack, it's what, $30? Um, so you're getting two figures and the playset game. If you just if you deduct the price of the two figures from there, and you go, well, okay, I want anger and I want joy to play in the toy box. The playset game is really cheap, and you are getting your va- you are getting your money's worth out of the. I'm finding the amount of hours I'm playing in it, it's shown to me the the value. I am getting my my money's worth out of the pure playable amount of time I've been in it, and then there's going to be that replay value. There's just not. It's maybe just it offers slightly less in terms of long long term use because of the unlocks. <laughs> no, yeah, there's there's lots of replay value, lots of replay value indeed. And and for me, I feel like I eventually will just you know bite my lip and go in there and try to play it and beat it. But like as far as I think for me, the reason why you know I'm frustrated with the whole balloon thing and and uh, but, but the reason why I probably don't prefer it. Um, is because I do enjoy the Star Wars ones. And, and and if I beat the two Star Wars ones completely with all the stars before the other ones come out, you know, I'll try to be in the toy box as much as I can, but to be honest with you, I mean, I'm going to want to play a playset, and the, the inside out is going to be my only option. So, um, But no, no, I mean, it's, yeah. it's lots, lots of replay value. I mean, if maybe my patience level wasn't the best at, when I was playing it. I don't know. Maybe I should like just be all, maybe if I'm in a good mood and I play the game, maybe I'll be <laughs> fine. But uh, maybe it was the way I was. I don't know what it is. Ultimately, there's t- plenty, plenty of replay value on this game. Play set, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it'd be one of those really cool things to like, you know, what you guys think as well at home, you know, comment below, let us know, because, you know, I think in some ways we, 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 I think there's definitely a split between us, between on how much we play. I mean, we're all very frustrated with certain parts of it. But there is, like I so, said, you know, there's been some people on the Facebook group like going, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't like it. And other people are like, if Fantastic is great, it's what they want from a, it's what they want from a Disney game. They want that. And I think they missed, and I think this is the thing, is we, we haven't had that sort of Disney play set for, for, you know, over 18 months since, you know, was it a, the Toy Story in Space from two years ago was the last time we had a toy, a, a, a sort of a Disney playset. And so this was the kind of the, the first one we've had since then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going, off, I'm going off on a tangent here, but technically it's still not a Disney playset. No, we, we haven't had one yet, but... Um, oh. but uh, <laughs> yeah, but the, 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 Disney slash Pixar as the... Um, yeah, <laughs> well, I never, we, I never quite get this thing of like why Pixar gets viewed as it's like they own by Disney. They've not ever released anything on their own. It's like okay. Were, all it is, all it is, is basically this. When people really want a, a Disney, like you know, you look at your your movies like Snow White, Pinocchio, you know, Aladdin. All those were always under the Disney umbrella. Pixar was always a separate company, and it was acquired. And that's that's the reason why it's separate. Uh, it's same thing with Marvel. Same thing with Star Wars. I um, mean, you know, or Lucasfilm. It was an acquired company. The only thing with that, though, is, to me, is like with Pix- with Pixar, and I never have really on a, again it's a tangent. Was Toy Story? Every P- Pixar movie has been released with Disney, so therefore I never had that feeling that it was a separate company. Yes, okay, it might have been officially a separate company, and they got licensed out to it. But I, I think because it wasn't like, well, there was 20 years of Pixar making movies before they got brought out. They were always Disney movies released. There was always, there, you know, Toy Story is Disney to me. I never, it doesn't feel like it's a, you know, well, there's that separate it, brand. It's like me saying Marvel was always Paramount to me because, you know, the Marvel Cinematic Universe started with Paramount. And, um, but that's just distribution. That's all it is. I mean, yeah. if you if you look at the way the industry works, you know, you don't have you have a studio and then you have a distribution studio and then you have all these different things. Kind of like DreamWorks is now going to be distributing through Disney. That's the way it is. But um, anyways, huge tangent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> going back to what you said. Okay, I get it. Under the Disney Originals side, yes, uh, it was great to have a new playset. Um, but yeah, 
That's all. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the same thing as well. And this is where I, I'm going to kind of, again, with this Disney side, this is what they need to do. This is what they're going to need to keep doing. Um, and I, yeah, the unlocks and integration with the toy box is one thing, but Disney have got to get their head around, you know, the idea was to always was instead of having all these separate games, put it all into infinity, infinity, they, this just should have, you know, this, someone like this should be the good dinosaur. It could, should be for Zootopia. These are the things that should be coming out. These little independent games built within the infinity brands, um, of movie tying games, Make them short, make them sweet, make them with the figures. This is what I always visioned the, the, the Infinity was supposed to be like. The The idea was to stop all those little tie-in movies and integrate them all into Infinity. Releasing um, Big Hero 6 characters in the toy box was not integrating Big Hero 6 into a video game. This, in, inside out, feels like the proper first time they've done that, where they've integrated a new product into the game as a side project that's been brought into it. Yeah, it's just the only thing is, like, I still feel like they're behind, too, because, like, for Zootopia or Good Dinosaur, we're only getting figures, you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and um, didn't they say that they wanted this to be a platform, so whenever a new property yeah. comes out, they'll have a video game? So, mm-hmm. l- like you said, if they're able to shell something out like this, like, you know, like a playset with, you know, plenty of gameplay, kind of like, uh, you know, obviously Inside Out has plenty of play- gameplay, that's going to be golden. It's going to be awesome. Um but um, no, yeah, I, I'm with you on that. On that note, I mean, uh, hopefully they got more in store for us uh, mm. once new movies come out. Yeah, it's that thing as well. Like, uh, like I said, if 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 Inside Out had been released as a separate video game, and I mean they talked about it with Speedway, should they make Speedway? Because you know, I think they've been I think they've been toying with this like, concept of do they release video? Do they release it all under one video game, or do they separate it up? And you know, I literally sit in there going, well, if they were thinking about splitting Speedway up, Inside Out felt like a game that could have been very easily split apart and just like, oh, by the way, you can, those figures can also be used in Infinity in the toy box mode. Um, I don't know. It, just, it definitely feels a bit odd. Well, I'm curious to see if, um, if we finally get to see how, what that's like when uh, Dimension, Dimensions comes out with LEGO, because according to them, it's just one game, and then afterwards, you won't have to buy anything afterwards. So mm-hmm. um, so if Disney goes that route where, you know, okay, we'll start just charging for the separate games now, the play sets and the little expansion games, then great. Um, I, I wouldn't mind that instead of buying a base and a, and a, and a disc all the time. But... Um, but I don't know. I, I just I just fear that they don't have enough time to shell out all these. Di- I mean, they got tons of movies coming out. Mm. I, I don't know if they'll have enough time to shell out games because games take years, just like mm. movies do. So, I think I. I mean, I can understand them not linking into some of like the live action ones, like Alice in Wonderland. Because, but things like Good Dinosaur have been in production for four, five, you know, for years. You know, it feels like you know the concept of something. Well, they're not. Well, they, they've been making them for years. It's not something that just gets quickly turned around, you know, like, say, for example, I don't know, say, like, the new Jessica Jones um, Daredevil, like, sort of those shows, which are literally flipped around with, and they're filmed within the same year and shot and put out. These animated movies are around, they're being made for years before they've even got anywhere close to us. Mm-hmm. Um, well, but no, it's, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, no. Uh, it, it's just like, you know, you usually, or at least the maybe this is a thing in the past now, but usually when a movie would come out, there would be a video game based on the movie. Now you don't really see that much. Um, well, I so, think the reason... So, well, I was going to say, because now with Disney, I don't even think they're going to continue that because they stray away from it. Like any Infinity game we get placed set, it's like a brand new story. Or even like, let's look at Marvel Battlegrounds. It's more like a fighting game as opposed to something to do with the movie. So uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting yeah. how they pull the this only, off. The only reason I think they've done that is because generally, in not all honesty, most movie tie-in games have performed very, very badly because they're always rushed. They're always thrown out just before the movie hits the cinemas when they're not really ready. You know, there's a reason why things like the Batman Arkham games rose above everything because they weren't connected to those movies. You know, they weren't connected to the Dark Knight and all of those things. They were separate entities. And, you know, there were so many really dodgy video games. But I think now, now their attention goes to mobile. 
that's where you now make a quick video game to have out for launch the Cinderella free fall, the Maleficent free falls, your big hero six game. Your, you know, this is where they, they are now they've focused. They can get something out quick for that and a lot cheaper. And video games, I don't think they bring in enough money in that sense that there's, they've got a bit more effort in. And I think Infinity fits that mold perfectly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, video game, video game movie time has been notoriously bad. And I think also, like gamers like us, we are all very, very wary. If there was a brand new movie, you know, I don't know, say like Fast and the Furious 7 or something like that video game comes out, you'd be like, oh, it's a movie tie-in, it's going to be bad. And you, there's just been that stereotype for years with movie tie-in games. Yeah, that's true. Very, yeah, very true. Yeah, so I think, so it's that kind of thing of Inside Out is a really good movie tie-in game. And I think that's the way that I'm looking at it. It's just a, because... Twilight of the Republic and Rise of the Empire aren't movie tie-in games. They're old movies. They've been out for donkey's years. Inside Out is brand new. Donkey's years? How long? Donkey. How many years? How long? How many years <laughs> is that? <laughs> is that the other American say? That's definitely not an American say. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it is. And I haven't been living in America for that long, but it's definitely not. <laughs> Yeah, it always does the, the cross international borders sometimes. <laughs> I can't wait to go to Europe. I want to use that. <laughs> <laughs> so first thing I'm going to say once I get off the plane and I go to London, oh, I've been on that plane for donkey's years. Oh, <laughs> did I use it right? Yes? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on that note. <laughs> On that donkey, (laughs) donkey is is your English word of the year of the week. (laughs) (laughs) Right, okay. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and remember to check out the full um, podcast on our YouTube channel, and you can also find it on iTunes. Remember to check out thiskingdom.com, and I shall see you guys on another video.